uh, 1.4.5. Okay, then. In evolution, now this is not human evolution, this is evolution before, this is the, the lesson you do before human evolution. In evolution, you also did it in grade 10, but that was very, a very long time ago for, for some of you. So you, you hit this information very deep down or very far at the back of your head. And so that's why they have to recap on this section. They also give a little bit more detail than they did in grade 10. And so one of two of the uh, main theories that you're going to go through in this section of work is those of Lamarck and those of Darwin. So for Lamarck, this is this question is based on Lamarck. Now Lamarck's theories uh, later, as you'll see in question 3.3.2 as well, was later rejected. Pretty good theories, uh, pretty sound research, but because of new research coming up, we uh, we could like say, okay, Lamarck, uh, very good theories, and and you had a very good imagination to use the evidence you had, but unfortunately, your your theory didn't stand the test of time, and so science is not a constant thing; it changes all the time. Uh, as we get new research in and as we discover new things, then we discover, okay, what we, what we thought was previously uh, right is, can become wrong. And this is typical of, of what happened to Lamar. So the question says, the diagram below shows the elongation of the neck of the giraffe according to Lamar. Okay, so what Lamar is saying is that if I, if this giraffe had to stretch his neck to reach the taller vegetation on the trees, then he would actually, his, his neck would become longer as he stretched it more and more and more. And that inherited characteristic that he received will then be passed on to his offspring. Okay, so according to the evidence that he had at that stage, it was correct. But if you think about it, if you go to the gym and you are like pumping the iron and you're building muscle, it's all good and well. You're going to have muscle, but you're not going to pass that on to your children. The muscle that you've built is not going to change your genes. And remember, at that stage, they didn't know about DNA and they didn't know how about genetics at all. But you're not going to pass those genes on to your children. Just because you're buff doesn't mean that your children are, are going to be buff. Uh, because you, you got those muscles in the gym, not because you inherited them from your father necessarily. So that's what the mass theories would have implicated. Um, and of course, that's not correct. So let's take a look at the question. Use the example in the diagram to describe the Marx theories for changes in the giraffe's neck over time. So we're busy with, please note, we're busy with question 3.3. I'm focusing on the questions that regards with human evolution and evolution. Okay, so what they're saying is that all giraffes have short necks okay initially all of them had short necks then the giraffes frequently stretch their necks so as to reach the leaves that are available higher up these trees and so as they stretch their necks their necks became longer and the characteristics for long necks it was acquired they acquired a characteristic and, and that was then passed on to the next generation. So they, they, they acquired long necks because they were stretching and they passed that on to their offspring. And eventually all the giraffes had longer necks. Now in the next question, you will see that um, if we take a look at Darwin, what Darwin is saying, Darwin is saying no. Um, 
they didn't get the characteristics of non necks because they they were stretching their necks and then passed it on to the next generation what actually happened is there was a lot of genetic variation in giraffes there were some giraffes with long necks there were some giraffes with short necks and we we see this in fossil evidence as well and so the giraffes with the long necks they could reach the 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 leaves at the top of the trees and so they could feed better they could survive better and they because they survived they could then go on and have sex with other giraffes with long necks and have kids well the giraffe with the short neck he didn't have enough energy to have sex and have kids he died so he never had kids and so all the giraffes with the short necks died and the giraffes with the long neck survived and passed their genes on to the next generation and so now all giraffes have long necks because the giraffes with the short necks could not survive they could not compete and they all died so it's very gruesome but that's the way it works and that is called natural selection and darwin was was not the first person to suggest evolution when darwin came onto the scene they knew evolution was happening um they could see it but they never knew the mechanism they didn't know how it happened and so now they know how it happened because now they know that it's because of natural selection so he just just suggested he's the mechanism for evolution uh, that was correct unlike Lamarck who also had a mechanism but but it was found that it wasn't correct so then the second theory uh the second question asked why was Lamarck's theory rejected okay there was later no evidence that shows acquired characteristics are inherited so just because you are as i said just because you are buff doesn't your child's not going to be buff because you spend time in the gym so there was no evidence for that those acquired characteristics can be passed over onto the next generation then there's no evidence that structures used more frequently became more developed not quite there but okay uh for 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 example the 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 stretching of the neck is not necessarily going to make your neck longer uh, in this case and then we we couldn't see a change in the phenotype that could lead to a change in the genotype just because you are going to have the muscle it's not changing your dna just because you're building muscle it's just changing your muscle but it's not changing the dna inside your cells Okay, let's go through this essay question quickly. Huh? Yes. So why are we learning about Lemeke? Okay, so we're learning about Lamarck because it's part of the scientific process. Uh, it was a theory and they commonly asked Lamarck, uh, please don't skip Lamarck just because we rejected his, theory, his theories. We, uh, they, they, they love asking Lamarck or they love asking a question about Lamarck versus Darwin in the papers. And why we're learning about Lamarck is because they want to teach you about the scientific process and how we prove theories and how we disprove theories and how the whole hypothesis and testing and then um, how you test your hypothesis and then you come up with a theory and it becomes so that whole process is displayed in what Lamarck did in what Darwin did now Darwin was meticulous he he his, his research was more sound he had more proof he collected more information he had hypotheses and he proved these hypotheses um, Lamarck took a look at a few observations and decided oh no there we go he's got some evidence and this is probably what happened because of the evidence he's collected but Darwin was more meticulous as this they actually have a weird example of how they, they um uh, of how they show how meticulous Darwin was with 
with acquiring evidence because even before he got married <laughs> he had a whole he actually had a long list of pros and cons um of why you should and why you shouldn't get married married and that he collect everything he did in his life was about collecting evidence and coming to a conclusion and so even in that one of the things he stated that if he didn't get married he would be able to afford more books <laughs> um, but he did like to get married and just for interest sake as well um, we talked about at the beginning of the lesson how are the two theories of um, creationism and of evolution actually don't oppose one another um, and if you take a look at Darwin he was actually a, a minister he was um, he was a clergy he was a he was he, he studied the he st actually studied the Bible um, so he actually uh, when he made his theories, um, he also didn't consider them to be opposing to what is happening in Genesis. Okay, so let's go to the last question. Question four. Describe Darwin's theory. Now, Lamarck's the one's theory and Darwin's the second theory. Darwin's theory became, uh, we now know is correct, and Lamarck's theory was rejected. Of natural selection. See, it doesn't say Darwin's theory of evolution we knew evolution darwin knew evolution was happening but they needed to find the mechanism for evolution and so his mechanism was natural selection and explain how it could lead to speciation by geographical isolation so there's two parts to this question darwin's theory of natural selection and then speciation by ge geographical isolation so if we take a look at the answers of the question, let's take a look. This is the first section. As I said, I did post the memo for you, but I want to go through and explain just everything here. But on Google Classroom, it's already there. So Darwin's theory of evolution by natural selection. Organisms produce a large number of offspring. So there's one, two, three, just in a short, um, three different um offspring just in a in a small area yes so there's lots of offspring and there's great variation genetic variation amongst the offspring so you can see that they are phenotypically different which means that all three of these are genotypically different so there's variation in the genes this one has a short neck that one's a medium neck and this one has a long neck so there's variation in the population then some have favorable characteristics a long neck is favorable in this situation because it could reach the leaves at the top of the trees but a short neck was not favorable and some do not so this one is not favorable short neck uh, you're not going to make it you can't reach the leaves you can't eat so you're going to die when there's a change in the environment con uh, conditions or if there's competition there's competition here there's no change here but there is competition here so when there's competition between the lot, who's going to win? The one with the longest neck. So whilst organisms with unfavorable characteristics will be less suited and they will die. So the ones with the more favorable characteristics, they survive. One with the less favorable characteristic, the short neck, they will die. And the organisms that survive, they reproduce. So these two are going to get together and they're going to make babies. They reproduce and thus they pass on this long neck gene to the next generation and then that genotype survives that allele survives on the gene the next generation will therefore have a higher proportion of long neck individuals of favorable characteristics so more are going to have long necks in the next generation less will have short necks because the short necks didn't survive to have kids okay so that's darwin's theory of natural selection let's go on to 